So let's go inside Sunshine Smiles Dentistry and let's put up their mural. Come on folks, let's go. So we're doing a mural today and we're prepping our tools. One of the things that we do when we prep our tools is to make sure that the smoothers, which gets, which the smoothers that get nicked scratched are now uh, sanded off just to make sure that we don't scratch the wallpaper with the scratch tool So now, let's go inside and I'll show you where we uh, prep the walls on a commercial uh, uh, mural installation. The walls have already been primed. The walls have already been dry for at least two weeks now. But I'm going to show you a test that we're going to do on the wall. Just to make sure. We're going to do a test on the wall to make sure that the substrate is sound. Come to your wall. Violate the top layer of it by scoring it. You can even do a star. Now, if this wall is not ready to receive wall covering, you'll know when you take this tape off. Push it in. What you're trying to do is take the paint off. If it comes off, your wall's not ready. So you want to make it nice and sticky. Okay. This is what would happen to the wall by putting this mural on. So the wall needs to be prepped with a primer that seals the wall from the wall covering. Okay, that's your test. You just make an X. Now let's show you without making the X. Same scenario.
You're just looking to get the burrs off of the wall. Little paint bubbles, any little hairs or fibers that are sticking up in the paint, the primer from the roller. Today I'm going to roll the glue on instead of putting in through my paste mate. Um, it's just better on this job. One of the things that happens with a mural like this, first of all, we're gonna let this mural book minimally 15 minutes. But take a look at the glue. Take a look at that glue. This backing is so thick, it's so strong, it's gonna drink the glue, right? Now here's a little tip for you. Don't wet your glue and water that down. Wet the top layer of it. Here's the difference. The first contact with the fibers of the backing is glue. This is sitting on top of the glue, just to keep it from drying out. You see the difference? Instead of saturating the fibers with oxygen, which is in water, let the glue work into the fibers instead. And then so it doesn't dry out prematurely, just simply wet the top layer, which is what the air is going to attack anyway when it tries to dry your glue. Very important to look at the application of the glue in different uh, light circumstances. For example, if you look over here, you can't see what's going on over there, right? So I suggest that you get over here and take a look at your borders to make sure that you have sufficient glue on the border. So there's nothing like getting up on a ladder, ready to roll, ready to hang your wool covering and your borders are bone dry because you didn't take the time to do this. There's nothing worse than hanging commercial wall covering near a drop ceiling, and then you not only get the drop ceiling contaminated with glue, but you get the little pieces of the acoustic ceiling behind the wall cover, and then you have bumps. It's very unprofessional, so I suggest that you take masking paper, tape it to the rail closest to the wall, and then simply tack it up on the metal rails in between the pieces. On this wall, we're almost ready to hang. I decided to put a layer of glue, and so now, it's super tacky. The wall covering is a little heavy, and so this will help it to stay on the wall and not slide. The first piece is the hardest piece because in the first piece is the planning of getting it straight. That's probably what makes it the hardest piece. Um, so we, we have an obstacle on the first piece. Very important that, that you understand that before that can be laid down, this obstacle must be dealt with before anything else. If you deal with that first, you will overcut this. And so we move our paper into the lab and we, we are presented with an obstacle. Let's cut it. You can open the camera if it's a long. Please come over here. Show them this on. Yes, sir. You see? It's working with a roll wire. Okay. Over here. You see this thing? Okay, we have to know our obstacle before we hang it. So, come in close. Look at this. This obstacle is your typical backsplash, so to speak. But it goes in here. You need to get the camera in there. You see that? So you need to know that you need to don't overcut this thing. Okay, let's let's see. So we use our fingers, right? It's the only way we can do it. 
Now I'm feeling, show them this. I'm feeling my obstacle. I can feel the top and the bottom, and I don't want to overcut it. I'm bringing it down because if I cut too high, I will overcut the obstacle. You see what I'm saying? Look at how beautifully. Now you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, we got that one done. Let's show them this. Looks good though. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. I want to cut upward. Because if I don't, if I cut down, I'm going to miss this. Show them that inside right there. Right there. See? See, I went upward, right? If I go down, right? I'm going to overcut. And that's a problem. It's a very really big problem. Just get that in there. You might call them and ask them the cor their corporate side of it. They might know away because right. I know they have a separate uh, corporate commercial side. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know, it's one okay. that has that's what we thought. Vision double side tape. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So, um, do we have something we're talking about? Well, that's fine right there. I'm going to start cleaning up. So we're just going to get off. I'll take all my stuff. Don't go all the way here. You'll overcut it. Go to the bottom and cut up. So that you get this. Again, we gotta know our. We have to know our obstacle here. You see that one down there? So now, if I just cut here, I'm gonna go straight through it. I'm gonna mess it up. Let's do it smart. Let's start at the bottom. Now look at the benefit of starting at the at the bottom. Look, we didn't overcut it in the least, right? Now, this is basura, Spanish for garbage. This is awesome. Okay. What the mm -hmm. That's how we do it. Ow, yeah. Um, that's how we do it. Like, if I can do it with that, I have a, a solid snake. A solid metal snake that I can bend and flex. If I can do that, I've actually this used that. Oh, do you have that shape? And now, we want to get our scissors involved in this because now, if you can do that, you're almost a pro. I run a whole machine shop. Can you really? Can you please get the scissors? You can stop. Thank you. Beautiful. Let's get this out of the way. Now, it's very important that you cut this piece at at least a 90 with, with that point, okay? Because your mind gets confused when you're down there and you can overcut it. You see? You see how it's easy to read? Okay. I'm going to cut it at a 90. If you mess it up. Okay. 
Grab it, take it, and Okay, there we go. Now it's workable. I didn't cut too much. And um, I'm almost there. Very easy to overdo this here. I looked at for a real while. I looked at doing a home based one, just one of them. It's DIY. Yeah, they're awesome. It's on the list. You can buy a little tiny one and make a whole bunch. These are the details of a professional. What you're seeing here, anybody can hang paper. But if you wing this, you'll make it look like garbage. Thank God Henry shot me up with that one. They're a lot of fun though. Yeah, sorry. When I say we made it work, we have a large unit at work, so we make So now I gotta make this. I'm just gonna cut that. Oh yeah. With a scissor. Mm -hmm. 3D printing, aligners, um, I get the bio orthodontics all through 3D printer, we put in a model that sucks in the world. Basically, she could do her own Invisalign in house, like call it Dr. Batero Smiles, whatever it might be. Um, so she put that ortho right there, or refer, maybe that's what it is. Um, and then also the surgical guys. We also, I sell like the. Um, are you ready to do all this? You don't want to overcut it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I sell. I do computers. Okay. More fun Let's get the glue like, off. Like it's milling, like same day crowns, things like that. Obviously, you can have children. So, what program are you going to sell for? AutoCAD? I think so. Are uh, you familiar with 3Shape at all? Um, I've heard of 3Shape. Okay, big in the hearing aid industry, then they went into dental, but basically they have. Design software, so as long as you get in, you just suck down the machine to do that. That, like, my orthodontist did that for me. And you're paying Invisalign $1,700 a case, give or take. You printed them off, you printed them off. And there's all in investment was maybe seven grand, so it's like, it's a no brainer. I feel like, but you're making some money too. Yeah, no, the dentist, I mean, they love it. Yeah, it's just, it's ROI. Easy. See how I made sure not to overcut the corner? See how we do So there's your first piece. It's up. 
Now, what I'm going Somewhere? to do is um, take a bottle of water. Can you bring me the bottle of water? Sort of preference, but mm. yeah. the problem is using this like a sensor. Okay, we're on to the second sheet, and things are going really well. Remember that we have a bed of glue on the wall that's 70% setting up, which means it's nice and sticky. I suggest that you do that with your murals too that are very heavy. I feel like Mr. Rogers today with my sweater. So, let's show the folks at home the, the line, okay? Please come close. Now, folks, this just happens to be a really easy mural to hang. But, if it weren't, you just bring the images together, okay? Now, if you really, if you're new at this, here's what you do. Take a piece of tape, run it down here on the edge. If you know your overlap is one inch and you know the width of your wall covering is 50 inches and you know your overlap is one inch, you know where to put your tape. You run your tape here so that you can have a guide on your right of what's straight. And this way, if you're a little uh, unsure of whether or not you're plumb, if you want a guide, you just run a piece of tape down here with a line, you know, level line, etc. Okay, so back to the overlap. Here's a good example, right here. Can you show them this? Yeah, show them this right here. You can see that we're off, right? So I'm going to grab it aggressively, very aggressively. You should come right behind me because I want them to see this. This is a high quality mural and you need to be aggressive with it. We can see that that's off by an eighth of an inch. slipperiness underneath it so she doesn't slide back. That's all. crazy about this yet, but it's a little too wet to uh, manipulate. I'm sliding. 
I am not going to leave that mismatch there. Isn't it beautiful? So, again, we're just going to work out the air. And, um... My wet rag is making it a little moist, so I don't scratch it. And I can feel a lot of air under here. You need to let this book give it a half an hour. On this, I'm going to send you the link. I'm going to show you the link. I don't play games here with these. These things, they take a long time to absorb the glue. And so, if not, you'll have a lot of bubbles. You have to know your wallpaper in order to make that determination. If you let it book too long, here's what happens. This line will be here, and this, they won't meet up. This line will be off, or this one will meet and this one won't, because it'll expand this way. It's normal for it to expand width-wise, but if you get expansion vertically, you have a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna show them something. Oh man. When you're moving a mural, you might be like, it doesn't match up, especially if you're dealing with shapes like a, the letter C. Very hard, you ma you'll match up here, but you won't down here. And what happens is your eyes are following the pattern without following the edge. See, if you follow the 90 degree edge, you won't let the pattern deceive your eyes. Oftentimes, all you have to do is move it to the left. Please come right here. <clears throat> we have a rounded shape here, and those are the hardest to match, because you'll be like, what's going on here? And move it up, it'll match, and then it'll be down, it'll be off here. This is what I suggest you do on rounded pattern matches. You simply move it either to the left or to the right. And that's usually the culprit that causes the issue. You see what I'm doing down here? Watch this. Can they see this? Okay. You say, oh man, what do I gotta do? I move it down and this doesn't match, right? Watch, watch me move it to the right. See that? That's what you gotta do. So you get the point. Usually, you let the pattern, paper hangers let the pattern deceive them. And then they tell the owner, well, your pattern was off. No, they were off because they let the pattern deceive their eyes and understanding. Meanwhile, all you gotta do, especially with these rounded pattern matches, you just go like this to the left, to the right. And you can see once again, that we have a perfect match. So we're at the point where we're going to double cut, right? Yeah, we do. You're working. So I'm a left-handed person. So I'm hanging from my left to my right, and uh, you do what's ever best for you. Come in close, please. My, I'm a lefty, so my left sheet is always going to be under my right. It's the only way I can do it. So now the goal is this. There's two things here that can be a problem. The ladder in your way and a blade that's not sharp enough. Add one more. This is not my favorite tool with which to cut a double cut. It's just not. It's cumbersome. And if you use a small blade, you know, the, it's half the size of this. Here's what happens. It flexes. 
it you makes your mind your squiggly. Go to my PC Please learn from my mistakes. Okay. I beg you. So I'm using a stronger blade. So now, technically speaking, as long as I cut within an inch of this edge, you might not be able to see it, but here's my edge. As long as I stay within an inch, I could literally cut like this. Nobody does that. But sometimes you see crooked lines. This pattern is so busy and so forgiving that it doesn't have to be perfect. So how do you make a straight line? You see these tracks here? If you keep them on a repeating pattern, you'll know where this is supposed to be. Let's say you have clowns. You know that this should be on the bubble or the clown's nose or whatever. These are helpers, these little marks here. Otherwise you can put a pencil mark on it. Here I have no steady pattern. So I'm going to use, now you could use tape and I have video showing the use of tape, simply by putting a piece of tape a half an inch from this edge, straight down. Could do that too. But when you um, advance in this, this is one of the scariest things to do when you're cutting wallpaper. This thing is 2,000 bucks, this mural. Okay, so you don't want to mess it up. Okay, let's do it. So if you can come behind me, get camera, man, and just show them what I'm talking about. See, I have a border that's very easy for me to see. I can see this thing. You might not be able to. And I'm going to keep it straight because I'm gonna make sure that it's equidistant as I go through the entire cut. I cut my, snapped a new blade, let's go. Let's do it. Press in. You see this here? This, when you start cutting up against here, it could really get in the way. Extend the shaft of your blade sufficiently that only the blade is negotiating against this thing. Okay, let's do it. First, gotta be really firm. <clears throat> okay, now we're into the, press hard, you're going through two layers of very thick material. Okay. Try not to lift your blade off of the thing. Especially with solid patterns. If you mess up here, it's forgiving. But, try to keep the blade on. Hard, press for me. Okay, now, you wanna move the ladder out of the way. And if it's cumbersome and has a lot of weight on it, that could be a problem. You don't want to take that blade off. Okay. Let's see how we did. Forget this material has been rolled up for a while, and so it's a little stubborn on the roll, right? So this will make the seams flush with each other. Huh. And you can hear it displacing the air as I do it. Just wipe any excessive glue that might come out. So 
So we're doing a double cut, just making sure our line is parallel now. I've left my line. I left my scene for about 40 minutes. I'm coming back to it. You don't want to leave it forever, but after 40 minutes, she has already stretched and she has constricted. She's ready to be cut. Okay. So, let's get to it. We'll cut the top first, right? Yeah. a very sh uh, strong blade. Because on a double cut, if your blade is weak, if it wobbles as you're cutting against the metal thing, your cut will wobble too. Please remember that. So I'm gonna use my edger. If you're not confident that you'll keep it straight, take a piece of one inch tape and using a level, put a used tape as your guide so that you run this on the side of your tape. That's one way to do it, or have a laser level behind you, throwing a level line. The only problem with a plumb line, the only problem with that is you block the line. But it can work. Okay. I want to get this in real firm, my first. Very firm, you're cutting through two layers. Nice and firm cut. Okay, try not to take the blade off of the material so you don't have start and stop lines. to take it off you can but I'll show you how to start it up again if you have to take the, the blade off real firm don't forget now my blade has been used about eight feet as of right now here's what I'm doing I'm going to maximize the cutting power of this blade by reducing the angle the blade is at the wall I'm bringing the blade closer to the wall so that, I'm not, so that I'm not just using the point of the blade, but I'm using more of the shaft in order that I cut through this thick material. See the angle at which I'm cutting? It's different than when I began, right? my hand comes down, the angle at which I'm cutting necessarily changes. The wrist is now going to pivot, which compromises the, the, the cut. It compromises it because it's not ideal. I want to get below that woodwork line and I think I made it. And I did, now I can take it off. And simply go to the bottom and cut upward. Okay. Now, if you had to take your blade off while you did the cut, this is what you do, come in close. You find the cut line, right? And you go an inch above where it's not cut yet and you run it through the line and then you start but you have to be able to find it. Okay, that, that is my overlap. Now let's get the underlap off. You 
see why I say it's compromised here. Even though it's scored. It's compromised with the cut. But over time, you'll know how to compensate for that. So, that my smoother is not going to scratch my walk up. Follow them with the camera as I go down. Just follow right behind me. Just follow the... Cosa Blanca, arriba, con la cámara. And that is how you do a double cut. I know it looks easy, but uh, takes a long time to learn how much pressure you have to put according to the materials you have. If you have a very thin material and you push too hard, you're cutting through the wall and now you have a draft, literally a draft behind your seam. That seam isn't gonna last. If you cut too little, you won't penetrate your, your undercut and that's a disaster. This is just right. I have a sea sponge, it grabs the glue. This is very fine stuff. It has a lot of pores in it. You need to get the glue out of those pores. But something aggressive, that gets in there. It's a sea sponge. It's worth the money. Why not? Dead man. This is what I call a second pass. Now our mural has been up for over an hour. We have double cut two of our seams. And now I'm moving the air once again because you don't want to get to the, to the end of the installation and then go back and try to move stubborn air. You don't want to get to the end of your installation and then go back and move stubborn air that's been sitting for two hours, three hours, or four hours. You want to nurse it as you go. And so therefore, this is called a second pass. During this time, we remove any residual glue that might be on our wall cover, and we remove the smaller bubbles that are now paste bubbles. They're no longer air pockets, per se. They're simply small, paste bubbles that are about the size of a United States nickel or smaller. And see how we're moving it out aggressively. Two hands on the transparent smoother and we pull it down and this really has proven for me to be an excellent manner of removing both air and a disproportionate layer of substrate paste. So from time to time we have wrinkles. Now this is the first wrinkle that we've had on this job. And uh, the wall covering is really excellent quality. But when we manipulated it, we crimped it. So we gotta get that out of there. And as you know, the only way to get a wrinkle out of vinyl is heat. And so we're just going to make a little heat. And usually with your mouth is sufficient. Now you know I'm just kidding. This 
You do want to test your uh, material with a piece of scrap before you put direct heat on it. And um, that's all it is. And you get the wrinkle out. Okay, it's done. This is impressive. YouTube, for him, you know, on installation, it's, it's got a really good meal here, it's sharp. It almost, it almost looks like you're in the aquarium. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty live one. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. You got, what's up? So we're done with our installation. And because it's a commercial establishment, we're going to protect the surface with a liquid laminate top coat. And this is called Magic Coat. It's gonna go on white. So we're done with our installation. And because it's a commercial establishment, we're going to protect the surface with a liquid laminate top coat. And this is called Magic Coat. It's gonna go on white. So we're done with our installation. And because it's a commercial establishment, we're going to protect the surface with a liquid laminate top coat. And this is called Magic Coat. It's gonna go on white. Just to make sure that you know where you left off, but it dries in two hours completely clear. And it protects the surface from scratches, from rings on your hand, Kids banging into it. And you apply it with a brush, just like paint. If any of you has ever used the product DIF, D-I-F from Zinser, which I never use, it smells just like that. You could show them the installation. So this is the end of our installation and I think we did okay with this. We have six panels in total and on the far left we're applying the top coat as you just saw a few moments ago. So you can pan them and show them, pan the, uh, the installation, just show them how it looks. You can come in close. Uh, if you think I did a perfect job, some of this material is so easy to work with. It hangs itself. It really does. And the seams are just flawless because they're really perfecting the material on which these prints are made. I hope you like it. If you like the video, click on like, subscribe to my channel. 
Let me know what you think. Tell me some tips how you guys work. Thank you. Let's show them. Thank you for watching my video. Please click on like and subscribe.